Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we are going to be continuing to look at the May June 2021 POB Paper 2. The May June 2021 POB Paper 2. So we did question 1, 2, 3, and 4 before, and so today we're looking at the last question on that paper, which is question 5. And so what you need to do now is like the, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when Learn SKN drops another video. You can also check out Learn SKN for the files to download this, 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 this paper and also to get all the videos associated with this paper in one area instead of having to browse the entire YouTube channel. You got there's a uh, LearnSKN.com is now dedicated to POB content. You go over there, get some papers and get some videos, the same videos but all in one neat area. Good. With that out of the, of the way, let's get started. Number five. A. List four social services which are provided by a government for the citizens of its country. And so this one is, is kind of straightforward. You only have to list them. And so now, you know, we have healthcare, We have education. We have uh, things pertaining to the environment. Also, we're looking at, even if you want to break it down, right even on the education you might have subsidized textbooks you can have subsidized food you know food meal school meal programs you have things like low income low income housing you have other things like training available via the the, the government you have various classes are available from the government so there are a lot of social services offered by the government under different headings whether it is on the education, on the housing, on the health, all those things. So you think about, you think along those paths and you will see, you get an idea of all of the social services that government would want to, to, to provide for, 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 for its citizens. I know some of us in the Caribbean, you go to university, the government might subsidize your university education. You might be able to get your CXE reduced based on your income level, income brackets, things like that. As I said before, school feeding programs. You have, like I said before, uh, subsidized housing. You know, so civil servants might have a reduced rate. Things like that. So think along those lines and you get four of them and you'll understand what social services the government would provide to you, the citizens of a country. So that's four easy marks right there. Then we have outlined two responsibilities of a government to its citizens. So there I provided a list earlier, responsibilities of government. You have national security. For sure you know that the government is responsible for the police, the defense force, those things to help to uphold law and order. So that's one for sure, national security, protect the citizens in the country. That's a main responsibility of the government. Health services. For sure, the government is responsible for providing the overall health care in a, in, in a country. They normally would have hospitals, health centers, those kind of things. They would navigate, they would put in place regulations and rules pertaining to health services, health care. So that's an next responsibility of the government. Education, again, overall, the government is responsible for the overall education of its citizens. Of course, you're going to have private schools and those things. But overall, the government would be the one who implements certain policies and regulations as it relates to education. The majority of the schools are public schools. The curriculum and those things are agreed upon by the government. For example, look at CXE. Most of the, the, the things CXE cover are agreed upon by the, the education officers across the region. So that's a major responsibility of the government. You have social safety nets. Like I said before, you know, the subsidized housing, school meals program welfare whatever else that's the responsibility of the government for its citizens national insurance to some extent in certain countries that's one thing the government uses to help to you know redistribute some income so that persons are able to afford certain procedures certain health related issues that can be paid for with the national insurance policy things like that especially for the civil servants environment the government is responsible for keeping the environment pollutant free, nice, clean, clear for, 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 for us the citizens and in multiple ways, not just physical environment, but also 
the emotional environment in the sense that you have to ensure that you know crime is not too high the the the, the atmosphere is there for business to flourish that kind of thing of course infrastructure the government is responsible for roads bridges lampposts all those infrastructure schools hospitals all infrastructure that is needed for the country to strive to develop of course the government is responsible for economic management looking at monetary policy fiscal policy they are responsible to ensure that the economy is running nice and smooth and you know inflation is not too high prices are not out of control unemployment is not sky high that kind of thing so all those are responsibilities that the government has towards the citizens of the country again security protection um, for general welfare of citizens job security with regulations and rules environmental protection maintenance of a safety environment for investors and so they go more in depth here in the textbook but you can basically you know how to based on what they are for example you can easily write three four sentences about national security police defense force law order that kind of thing you can write three or four sentences about education uh paying for you know pre-k the curriculum all that kind of stuff education you can write three or four sentences about health what the government has to do as it relates to health so you drop down those things if you want to go textbook sure you can use the textbook but you want to go you know natural or your head very easy question to do from your general knowledge right so that's b four easy marks right there c describe three ways in which the government may assist in the development of the local business sector how can the government assist in the development of the local business sector so there are a number of ways in which the government can assist in the development of the business sector now one of these ways of course would be to provide financing very easy way is to provide financing uh, governments can provide you know soft loans to, to 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 business people a soft loan meaning that there's a small interest rate attached to it you have to pay back the money but there's a small interest rate attached to it so they can provide that for 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 business people they can also provide what we call grants you now a grants doesn't really a grant doesn't really really require any um it doesn't require repayment so a grant would be like a government giving a business ten thousand dollars to invest in themselves and then move on but the point is that capital money financing is one way in which the government can assist in helping to develop small businesses or local businesses lending giving them low cost loans you know low interest rates giving these companies grants so that they don't have to repay and they can have a little heads up so that's one way in which they can offer assistance by uh, financially then of course technically the government can assist these companies on a technical level right they can assist them in a technical level such as training mentoring offering financial support in the form of you know good record keeping uh you're, you're having your financial statements done properly so technical assistance is one way in which the government can assist these businesses so they can develop further right so that's one another way in which this can occur government support takes many forms and and be for a range of purposes for example financial assistance such as low-cost loans or non repayable grants can support capital investment in new technologies or encourage the installation of new and more productive machinery it may also be used for investment in skills and training example for more employees to improve their skills and productivity financial assistance may be also used for the research and development R&D of new more efficient products and production processes so all these are ways in which government can assist in support in helping or uh, help small businesses to reach a level that they can be more productive more competitive so financially technically they can also you know training right training and human development they can help in developing the human resource like i said government can offer scholarships well not scholarships per se but when you go to university they can help to you know pay for your economic costs reduce your cost of going over there they can offer 
like I said, uh, you have programs that can be used to pay for CAPE, CX uh, level exams, those kind of things. So government can help to invest in human capital so that the businessmen can help, can become more readily, readily prepared for the, the new world, the new way of doing things. They are up to date with their skills and things like that. So all those are ways that government can help to assist small businesses. Of course, research and development, research and development, government can help to assist in research and development to discover new ways of doing things, new ways of maybe producing something more efficiently, new ways of producing new breeds, new varieties, you know, let's say, let's say for agriculture, for example, they can help to develop new species, new animals that can, you know, upgrade the current stock that the, the, the country has and things like that. Access to research, information, and expertise can be invaluable to businesses. Virtual and actual research and information centers have common objectives, encouraging business development, providing expertise, and helping businesses to keep ahead. So a lot of, co a lot of government invests in these kind of incubators and those kind of centers, you know, think tanks to help to further develop or enhance their, their entrepreneurs within the country. Of course, you, if you read along here, you have a lot of examples here. Cardi, research and development with um, animals and plants that can help local farmers and things like that. And of course, one of the biggest ways that government can assist is subsidies. And I mentioned grants before, but subsidies especially. Subsidies is a form of government assistance, financial assistance, which it helps to lower the production costs of product uh, of, for, the con for the producers. That's the main aim of subsidies. Sometimes the local business is going to compete with imports because of the production costs, and so government can step in, offer subsidies, so that they can lower the production costs and enable that business to be more competitive on that market. And so subsidies is, is, a, is a very big thing. One of the main ways that government tend to assist small businesses. They allow you to bring in certain things duty free. They allow you to buy inputs at a reduced cost because the government will cover the rest of the cost and things like that. I already covered grants. Grants are just money is given to, to companies like startup costs, you know, money to help the business go further that you don't have to repay. Those are grants. Right, so all those are ways in which government can assist in small businesses development in the, the local sector. Right, so you, you, pull, you pull any three and you'll be able to kill that question quite easily. Number 5D, education could be considered one of the, gr the greatest growth industries of development, developing economies. Explain two ways in which education could contribute to economic growth in the Caribbean region. So this one, again, is very straightforward in a sense because all of us, I mean, the reason why we are here on the channel is to help to develop ourselves as human capital. And so education and training, human resource development is one of the key ways in which, the, in which the, that can contribute to economic growth, especially in the Caribbean region. So let's just look at it. Uh, from a logis logical point of view. So imagine you're, you have a country where most of your citizens are educated, university educated or technically educated, whichever one you want to put it. Now, what does this mean? This means that these persons should be able to operate at a certain level, at a higher level, in terms of skills, in terms of um, their mental capacity, in terms of their level or quality of work, they should be able to, up to, to, to operate on a certain level. Now, the question asking us about contribute to economic growth. Remember, economic growth is about increasing output, increasing GDP, that kind of thing. And so imagine somebody who is entrepreneurial, they're going away, study, come back. You have more of those persons, then you have more entrepreneurial persons within the, 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 sec within the country. That means now, more jobs are available, higher employment, more production. So that would in turn means that output, 
GDP would increase, so economic growth would increase because persons are educated in so many different ways that they can have varying careers, varying skill sets to use to help to improve the overall output of the country. They say here in the textbook, improve work, worker productivity and performance. So imagine that you are skilled, you're educated. That means now, like I said before, you, you operate at a higher level. You should be operating at a higher level. That means now that your produ productivity should be higher, your performance should be higher, and so that could in turn lead to economic growth because you are producing at a higher clip than you would have if you did not receive certain training, certain education. So you would improve your productivity, your performance, all that would lead ultimately to an increase in output and a growth in the economy, economic growth. Addresses the skill gaps, so employees have the skills needed or wanted by a business. So that means now that the, if a country was lacking a certain set of skills, there are certain gaps in, 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 in the skill set, that would mean that productivity, production, economic growth would stall a bit, would be slower than it should be. But if you go now, educate your staff, improve their skill set, that means now that as a country, as a, as, a, as a business, as a country, overall output should rise, productivity should rise, because now the skills are there to match what is required to lead to economic growth. So the skill set, the gap, the, the, the know-how, the knowledge is now there within the country so that the country can produce, perform at a higher level, and so that would lead to economic growth. Now, this doesn't only apply to those hands-on skills because the third point here says, ensures all employees work consistently to the correct policies and procedures. So what we're saying here is that, I'm gonna look at this at two levels, in terms of internal policies and external policies. So internal policies meaning that if you have good management skills, you go over, you, do so, you, get, you get an MBA or something, good management skills, now you can lead that firm, lead that company to maximize their output, maximize their profit, which can in turn lead to economic growth. Also, external policies. If you go away, you know, you do some studies in maybe taxation, some studies in political science, some studies in public sector management, something like that. Now you can use those skills to craft policies that can help to further develop the the the, the 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 country the sector because you're more knowledgeable you have education now that could help you to implement certain policies on the ground level that can lead to increased performance increased productivity more a better environment for businesses to strive and so that would in turn lead to economic growth and you know they say increased job satisfaction you're skilled you're knowledgeable you're educated you feel good in the job, you're comfortable, you know what to do, and so that would, end, that would lead to, again, increased performance, increased productivity, you're motivated, all that can lead to your uh, um, increase the, uh, the contribution towards economic growth in the Caribbean region. So, you know, anyway, you, you put it, they only ask for two, but you can pull whichever ones you, you desire, based on what we just discussed, explain them a bit, and you get your full marks for that one. So improve proper work, work productivity and performance, address skill gaps, ensure um, employees are consistent and use the correct policies, ensure government implement proper policies. Anyway, you can put it, you can turn it. Education is a key factor in moving a country from one level to the next in terms of economic growth. Some of the developed nations in the world have some of the most most skilled workforce. Well, some of the most productive countries in the world, Germany, look at Germany, a very productive country because a lot of the, 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 the citizens are educated, skilled, and they know how to go about doing what they have to do. All right, so that, that's basically it for that question. Only, you know, two points, three marks each, four or five sentences each, you're good to go on that one. All right, so that's it for this question. And that completes that paper, the May June 2021 POB Paper 2. Done, dusted, in the bag. Right? So that's it for this paper. So now you know what to do again. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, 
hit the bell to know when learn skn drops another video and again be sure to check out learnskn.com that's our new site our new blog site that we upload the papers so you can get this paper if you just simply click on this post right here you can get access to downloading the paper you can also get all the questions related to this paper and the paper one in one stop shop right there you can look at all the questions back to back to back in one area the paper one is right here download the papers right here and so check out learnskn.com for a more curated experience as it related to pob i'm only going to post pob stuff on this um site so you can come to get all the pob that you need we're not going too far back we just posted from 2019 and anything new will be posted here so that we can you know get them in one stop shop uh, uh, even though although the, the the completed paper ones are still available for purchase uh on the the video links just look at the description you see the links for the videos you can purchase the paper ones that are completed or uh, if you want all in one the blank ones along with the textbook and the syllabus and whatever you can purchase those from the packs that we have available in the description so that's it for now thanks for watching thanks for listening